This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and today we are going to take a look at some absolutely amazing tips to help you get started in your Diablo 4 journey. Let's get to it. Whether you're a full on min maxer or not, when it comes to these style games, the first thing I advise for you to do is to go into your options, go to gameplay, and turn on the advanced tooltips and the advanced item compare. This is going to do two very helpful things. First, it's going to make it so much easier to tell if a new item is better than the item that you currently have equipped. It's also going to show you how good an item is just as a baseline because it shows you how high the stats for that item can possibly roll for. This can show you things like whether or not you have perfect rolls on an item or absolute trash rolls. This also gives you advanced tool tips in other places like in your skill tree and shows you if a bonus is multiplicative or additive, which is extremely useful information, especially when you're trying to stack damage so you can maximize your damage output. The next tip I have for you is to go back into your options, back into gameplay and go to the item label display option and choose push to toggle on and off. So for me, the key is alt. I don't know what it's going to be if you're playing with a controller, but if you're playing on PC, it's the alt key. You hit that, it will show the label of all of the items that are on the ground. This just makes it easier to see where things are on the ground so you don't miss things. Then you want to head over over to accessibility and you want to scroll down till you see the item drop sounds as well as the play audio on ambient loot. I would make sure that both of these are turned on and then the slider at the bottom for minimum quality, slide that to wherever you want it. So for example, for loot drops, I have mine set to magic. That way it only plays the sound when magic or higher items drop. The ambient loot is going to help you detect near by things by playing ambient sounds when those things are nearby that equal the quality you have selected or higher. All of these settings will just help to ensure that you don't miss valuable items because there is often a lot of stuff going on on the screen and they are sometimes easy to miss. The next few tips I have for you are centered around maximizing your gold and crafting materials. So first off, pick up everything. I mean everything. Normally in games like this, you get trained to a point where you start to ignore lower quality items and you don't bother to pick them up because they're just considered trash and they're not worth your time. However, even the lowest quality of items in Diablo 4 can sell for a pretty hefty amount even in the mid game. And because it is free to town portal back anytime you need to go back and sell things, it makes sense to pick up these items because it only takes a second to jump to town and quickly sell everything that you have marked for. Or junk. Once you get to the point where you start seeing gold items, just sell every single piece of equipment that drops that is blue or white. However, when it comes to the rare gear, aka the gold stuff that drops, you should be breaking down more of that than you are selling. Normally what I do is quickly go through and scan the prices of things, mark the things that I currently have in my inventory that sell for the most that I'm not interested in as junk, and then I break break down everything else that I'm not interested in. The reason for this is, is because you are going to need all of the resources that this gear gives you for crafting. And the gold gear or higher is the only gear that gives you the crystals you are going to need to do things like enchant your item or putting aspects on them. And these veiled crystals aren't a guaranteed drop when salvaging an item. They are a chance drop. So you're going to need to salvage a lot of these items. Luckily, it gets to a point where you will get a lot of these items dropping, but you'll see a lot of other videos and websites telling you that you should salvage all of these items, and that is not a good idea. This game takes a lot of gold to do pretty much everything, especially when it gets later on in the game. You are going to need gold to do pretty much anything you want to do. And while white and blue items can sell for a decent amount, the rare items are going to sell for a lot more. So it makes sense to sell some of them. Using this method currently, I I haven't had any issues with ever running out of gold and or any of the resources I need to upgrade, enchant, or do anything else I need to do. It's all about finding that balance. The next tip I have for you is start your game in world tier two. The reason for this is you get more gold and faster experience. Now world tier two is a little bit more difficult, but honestly, it's not that bad. And you can swap back to world tier one at any time. So start off with world 
world tier two. And if for some reason you are just having a terrible time and it is too difficult for you for whatever reason, you can easily swap back to world tier one. If you have an item that has a socketed gem in it and you are no longer going to use that item, but you want to make sure you get your gem back, if you salvage it, you will get the gem back for free. You can unsocket the gem, but you really only need to do that if you are going to keep the item and you want to swap that gem out for something else. If you're done with it, it makes sense to not pay the unsocketing cost, just salvage it and get the gem for free. You can track and hunt down the locations of different aspects very easily. So if there's one that you are looking for and you want to get as soon as possible, all you need to do is go to your collections screen, click on codex of power, and then from there, click show my class only, and then select the aspect that you are looking for. If you are looking for one for your class that you're currently playing, if you're hunting for a different one, don't click show my class only. Click on the aspect that you want, go to the map, and it will set a waypoint for you and guide you directly to the dungeon you need to go to to get said aspect. When you are adding aspects to different items and you want to maximize the stats that you can get from them, try all of the different items that it's possible for that aspect to go on. I noticed that the numbers change depending on the item. For example, you can see on the screen now, this necklace gets much higher stats on it compared to everything else for this specific aspect. And it doesn't have anything to do with the level or anything like that. I'm not sure why necklaces are favored for this aspect, but you can see when I try another aspect that changes, this necklace is no longer favored and it actually rolls lower stats than everything else. So make sure when you are looking for something to put an aspect on, you try all the different options that are available. And the last tip has to do with sorting, and it's just something that people may not have noticed that I didn't at first that I wanted to point out, and that is when you auto sort, it not only sorts all of the like items together, so for example, all of your pants will be in the same row, it also puts them in order of greatest power to least power. So if you want to quickly, for example, find the pants with the highest item level, you auto sort and it's just going to be the first pants once you get to pants. All right, and that is going to wrap it up for this video. If you found this video helpful or informational in any way, please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload more Diablo 4 content. And if you're looking for some more D4 content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.